I would do a 90 minute bout of work. Now, why 90 minutes? Well, the brain is going through these 90 minute so-called ultradian cycles throughout the entire day and night. Every 90 minutes, we shift over from being very alert to being less alert and then back to alert again. Here's how it works. At the start of one of these 90 minute ultradian cycles, my brain is not quite engaged in whatever it is I'm trying to do. Now, oftentimes, I have things jumping into my mind. I've got distractions, etc. I'll talk about how to deal with those distractions in a moment. But I set a timer for 90 minutes and I try and get a strong bout of work done inside of that 90 minutes with the full understanding that the entire 90 minutes is not going to be uniform in terms of my ability of focus. There will be kind of peaks and valleys within that, but that 90 minutes is about what the brain can handle in terms of a dedicated effort for high degree of focus. Some people can push out a little bit further. Some people can't handle more than 10 minutes, but that's what I'm striving toward. You'd be amazed how much you can get done in 90 minutes if you are focused. So how do you increase that focus and how do you use the, the timer feature? Well, you can combine those. I use a program called Freedom. It shuts me out of the internet completely. So that means no checking the markets, no checking social media, no checking uh, you know, the, the news, no checking email, none of that. I get a dedicated bout of work done. I confess, I don't allow myself to go to the restroom in that period of time. Here's an interesting little tip that's grounded in physiology. You have a direct neural connection from your bladder to your brainstem areas that increase alertness. This is why when you have to go to the bathroom, when you have to urinate, it is extremely agitating, right? It can be very, very agitating. I'm not encouraging you to get so agitated by filling your bladder so much and resisting going to the bathroom that you are uncomfortable and can't focus. But I generally will just drink liquids and work away and work away and I won't walk away to go use the bathroom unless I absolutely have to. It's sort of odd that we're talking about this, but this is one way in which I've learned to funnel my attention into whatever it is I'm doing. Because as you all know, the moment you sit down to do some serious work and you flip off the internet, all of a sudden, it's as if the phone has a voice. It starts calling you. It's almost as if the restroom has a voice. But we all are familiar with the fact that if we are focused on something, that we, all that just kind of melts away. So the goal is to get into what I call the tunnel, to really get into a tunnel of quality work. The brain loves that state, but it's very hard for many of us to access. My phone is absolutely off. It's not on airplane mode. It's absolutely off during this time. If I've been struggling with that, and I confess, you know, I, there are times when for whatever reason, something going on in life, it's been harder to put away the phone. I will sometimes put it in my car. I used to joke that I used to throw it up on the roof or something like that. Look, I've done, and I suggest people do whatever they need to in order to self-regulate that activity. And if you're somebody that feels that you absolutely need to be on your phone and on the computer for this work bout or the work that you do, well, that's a different matter altogether. This is just simply how I work. So I will do 90 minutes and I do set a timer and I turn on the program. Freedom locks me out of the internet. If someone rings it on the doorbell, um, I will often shout, not coming to the doorbell, leave it there. I mean, unless there's an, a real emergency, I'm not going to step away from that work. I learned how to do this when I was a graduate student under different conditions where I used to like slice brains on what's called a microtome. So I used to spend time just cutting very thin slices. It's like a deli slicer, but for a brain of uh, various types of brains. And I've sectioned through a lot of brains. And we had a rule, which is that when the blade hits the brain, you don't stop pulling, even though it's very, very slow, even if a nuclear bomb goes off even if a fire alarm goes off. Now, I don't want anyone you know, burning to a crisp because uh, they didn't step away from their workflow. That would be foolish. But that's the mentality that I've embedded in myself, that there, there's nothing more important than what I'm doing in that 90-minute block. And that's what works for me. You can try various other things. That's what works for me. In addition, I use low-level white noise. This is something that is supported by quality peer-reviewed data, we covered this on the episode on hearing and balance, but it turns out that white noise, which is essentially all frequencies of sound, or all frequencies of sound that we can perceive, mixed up kind of randomly, there's no structure to it, turned on at a low volume, not with headphones most of the time, puts the brain into a state that's optimal for learning and workflow. And I covered two papers during that episode, one that showed that indeed, 
brain areas involved in attention, brain areas involved in focus and cognition and memory, those are engaged to a greater degree when there is low levels of white noise playing in the background. The other paper that's really interesting did brain imaging and showed that areas of the brain that are associated with dopamine release are increased by low levels of white noise. Dopamine release is associated not just with pleasure, but with motivation and craving. So everything about this 90 minute block from the low levels of white noise to the position of my computer, how I'm standing and where my eyes are positioned is geared towards putting me in this tunnel of work. And I have to say that while it can be a challenge to try and achieve this state and this tunnel of work, some days you start to get kind of addicted to it. It feels really good. It's like a workout for the mind. And it uh, is something that as you exit that 90 minutes, you really feel like you've accomplished a lot because often um, you have, and it just feels deeply satisfying. And I'm convinced that that's because of the release of neuromodulators like dopamine and the uh, norepinephrine that's circulating in your system. And I want to be clear that I'm not perfect about this 90 minutes. Occasionally I get drawn away. Occasionally uh, something will happen or I'll uh, go use the restroom or uh, Costello will have a need or somebody will have a need that I'll, that I will have to respond to. But I really try and achieve this most, if not every day that I'm alive, because for me, that work session is kind of holy. It's where I, where I set up a relationship, not just between me and the work that I'm doing, but between me and my ability to control my own state of mind using these various supports of the white noise, et cetera. But really, those supports are peripheral to the fact that I'm creating this space. I'm funneling my brain into a state rather than allowing whatever events and contexts on social media and elsewhere might be occurring in the world that would yank me out of what for me is my purpose and my mission in life, which is to do the sorts of work that I do. There's a powerful way in which you can place the timing of this 90 minute work bout in an optimal way. You have access to a very important piece of data that dictates when this bout should start more or less and when it should end. That piece of data is your temperature minimum. If you're somebody who wakes up on average at 7 a.m., well then your temperature minimum is 5 a.m. And you can be reasonably sure I want to underscore reasonably, but you can be reasonably sure that your best work is going to be done anywhere from four to six hours after your temperature minimum. So for me, I tend to wake up around 6.30 a.m. That means my temperature minimum is at 4.30 a.m. You can add five hours to that. So that means that a 90-minute work bout could fall at 9.30 a.m. and it would be fairly optimized. Or I could do it at 10.30 a.m., or I could do it at 8.30 a.m., somewhere in there, all right? That we can't say that it's exactly six hours after your temperature minimum. You will find it, however. There is a precise and best time for you to do this 90-minute work bout. Whether or not it's five or six hours after your temperature minimum is going to vary from person to person. How do I know this? How do I know this relationship between temperature minimum and focused cognition? Well, temperature minimum defines the trough, the the nadir, as they say, of, the, of your temperature across the 24-hour cycle. And immediately after that, your temperature will start to rise. That temperature rise is actually what triggers the initial cortisol release that you experience and wakes you up further. And then, of course, that sunlight that you're getting is going to further enhance that healthy release of cortisol. That cortisol will then provide fuel, if you will, for that increase in temperature. And your body will continue to increase in temperature throughout the day toward the afternoon. What you're trying to do in this, in this idea of optimizing this 90 minute work bout to a particular time of day is catch the portion of the steepest slope of that temperature rise. Now, again, you're not working, walking around with a, with a thermocouple or uh, a thermometer um, in some uh, orifice of your body. So you don't have accurate information about temperature, but you can make very good guesses about when your body temperature is rising fastest by virtue of that temperature minimum. So again, just to be clear, it's a 90 minute work bout. That's about what the brain can handle for a very intense work bout. Do understand again that there are going to be portions of that 90 minute that your brain is flickering in and out of focus. Other portions where you're going to be entirely focused. That's entirely normal. But when to place that 90 minute work bout, when to start it and when to end it will depend on that temperature minimum. So if you're somebody who wakes up at 8 a.m. each morning, your temperature minimum is 6 a.m., chances are you're going to want to start this work bout somewhere around 10 a.m. or 11 a.m. 
Now, some people wake up and feel very alert first thing in the morning. They can really do their best work first thing in the morning. Please, if that's you, continue to do that. Leverage that time. Use that time. But if you're somebody who struggles to find focus, definitely let your physiology and this rise in your body temperature support your efforts to focus rather than trying to do your best work at times of day when your physiology is actually directing your body and your brain toward defocus and towards being more lethargic. It just is setting yourself up for success when you try and capture this rising phase of your temperature.